Okay, yeah. are we starting now? Yeah, starting. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I guess today we thought we would record in the garden, right? Mm -hmm. So we're doing our podcast, and then we're also videoing us, because that seems fun. And then we got Ava here, because she doesn't like to nap. That's right, she's against napping. <laughs> so she's going to hang out there. I don't know what she's looking at. Mm-hmm. Flowers, maybe? Maybe. And then we're going to chat. Yeah. So this is our garden space, and um, we decided about a month ago to add some lights to mm -hmm. it. We had, um, I don't know, for a while thought, oh, maybe it'll add more ambiance or make it more fun. And um, you ordered some, and we got them. And then we planned for a day. And, you know, our time, <laughs> our time is slightly limited with Ava. So it's like we have a window of this much time. Let's hang the lights, right? And we kind of gave ourselves the excuse of inviting a whole bunch of friends over so that uh, that would be the reason to finish it. Finally. Yeah, and that was Friday we did it, and they were coming Saturday night. Right? Yep. So, you know, last minute, why not? Why not? I'll let that car pass just in case it's too loud. So we ordered the lights and started getting them ready, and we had two ladders, and it was kind of complicated to get this figured out. So um, you took the lights out of the box, and it was, uh, we did metal wire first. Yeah, to hang the lights on. Yeah. So I took that out first to to hang it all around the garden. It was like 250 feet worth mm -hmm. or something like that. And so you, <laughs> I, I wasn't, pulled it out. I it was wasn't nicely, watching you when you did nicely it. Nicely in a loop. And I pulled one end and then I just shook it out. <laughs> Instead of net, let's straighten this out. No, 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 hold on. You just unwound it the wrong way. That's correct. So you took all this 250 feet, let me emphasize that, mm -hmm. and pulled the wrong part of it through the wrong part of it. Through the wrong part of it. That's right. So it turned into 250 feet of knots. Exactly. Uh -huh. So here's the best part. It literally wads up, right? Into like... like literally. Li I'm, not, I'm actually not exaggerating. Mm -hmm. Where you could not figure out where it started and where it ended. And then you said, oh no, I forgot to get the tops mm -hmm. for the tops of the poles to string the lights through. So I got to go to the, to the hardware store. Deuces. Enjoy the knots. So he left me with the knots. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So that was the first fun experience in trying to put up the lights. But now we put them up and I think they're fun. You can't see them as good right now um, to those watching it on video just because so they are really it's fun at night. Um, kind of bright. So and our, our, whole, our whole goal down here was uh, when we bought this land, nothing was really here. What was in this space here was a trailer that had burned down and there was still a lot of trash and we wanted to be the house to be a little further off the road so we decided to clean up this area and make it a garden and our excuse was or i guess one of our motivations was if we're going to spend more time in the garden we have to make it as fun as possible to be in so that included ideas like one day lights mm -hmm. um, the raised beds which is kind of not needed. It's not needed, no. And but if you're trying to do a garden. Yeah. It made it more fun. Um, the rocks was so we wouldn't have to keep putting down straw but or bark. But uh, we didn't use thick enough <laughs> weed barrier. Matting. So that was kind of a wasted <laughs> idea. Right, Ava? So uh, now there's weeds everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so we're yeah. having to like pull all the weeds yeah. and might have to redo the barrier underneath. Uh, then we stained the beds. We didn't use treated wood. That would have been so much easier, but... They say that can leach into the soil, so we used untreated wood, so we have to stain it every season. On, on the much. outside of the beds, not the inside. That's right. And uh, That's a lot then of some music, so like a Bluetooth speaker. So we really like being down here. Yeah. I think we determined that if there's something that you really want to do and you want to spend a lot of time in, then make it as fun and inviting as you can. That's right. So that you want to spend time there. And I think. Um, that could apply to a lot of different areas in our lives. So whatever your job or hobbies or things are, uh, make it so it's a great experience for yourself and others. I was at uh, an event this past week where it helped me realize the value of when people enjoy going to work. Uh, if you don't enjoy going to work, it can be miserable. Mm -hmm. But one of those key things, I think, is do people have... Uh, time at work for just social interaction. It's not just all work. Uh, right, Ava? Yeah. She, she agrees. Like, 
eight, 10, 12 hours of solid work, no fellowship, no community. Uh, I think that's what leads to burnout. So you gotta have some enjoyment at work. So anyway, it was creating a space. The idea that came to me was the, the value of creating a space that people could come to throughout the work day, interact, get something to drink, and head back to their office. All you need is five, 10 minutes. A lot of people say, oh, that's a waste of time. No, that is so essential. Isn't it Google that has like the major amazing workplace yeah, to the but, extreme maybe? To the extremes. They're starting to realize that doesn't actually work. Mm. You actually have to get some work done. But <laughs> long story short there. <laughs> but I, I think we wanted to talk about the idea of making things memorable. And yeah. I read a book, if you can see this, it's called The Power of Moments. And in this book, it just talks about the little things in life that are memorable. And so one example it gives in here is uh, a hotel in California. It's not the most fancy, but it's pretty pricey. But the reason being the reviews are so high because when you go to the hotel, it, it sounds like the way they describe it, it's like an old school motel. That's fun. Where all the rooms and then there's a courtyard in the middle. Um, I don't even think they describe the rooms on the outside, walking out into the hallway anyway. But you get to the pool and there's this phone and it says popsicle hotline. <laughs> and you literally can pick up the phone and somebody comes with all these flavors of popsicles. And that costs the hotel a few dollars. It's free, it's a free service, It's right? a free service. To the, to but to resident. people that go there, they never forget it. And it, there's, there's things you can do. Uh, I'll give you an example of uh, there's this golf course in Arizona. I love to go to the desert in the middle of the summer in Arizona every summer with some friends of mine. And we play golf because it's cheap. These three or four hundred dollar per round golf courses are thirty or forty dollars. It's 118 degrees, and no one in their right mind plays 36 holes of golf five days in a row. I would except... probably die. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Uh, the first year we went out there, though. We went to a course that I've never forgotten. And every year we go back, if it's open, we play it. And it's called Greyhawk. And it was totally out of the norm. Literally the driving range, you drive up and there's music playing. And you're just enjoying music hmm. uh, while you hit golf balls. They're, they would come around in the golf carts with these big coolers full of ice cold towels that smelled like peaches and watermelon and Oh, the most amazing. So you're like literally- all your senses are yeah, being- Yeah, all your mm -hmm. senses. And I've never forgot that. Like when you ask me about, what do you think of playing golf in Arizona? I never can think of it without that experience. That place. The music, the smells, the sunshine. So it's those little things that make all the difference when you're trying to create something that's memorable. So at, even at your own house, for us, it was, how do we do that with a garden? But it could be that with, how do you do that? Where you go to the bathroom. <laughs> How do you how do you enjoy it every time you go in there? You know, there's a million things I you can do. I will say, I was thinking the other day that our our toilet room in our room is not real jazzy, and I really was thinking, I feel like we need to make this better. Yeah. Anyways, so that's an idea. <laughs> Why? I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> Oh, I'm just, anyways. Okay, yeah, fine, it is. Whatever. Like, it's an institution. Yeah, I get it. It's all like all white walls. Well, like, I thought if just we do, Just do your like... business and get out. <laughs> Clock has turned. Well, I thought if we do, like, maybe chalk walls or something, you can write ideas. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Anyways. Brilliant. Okay, anyways. Yeah, okay, so make things memorable. You know, when I did wedding dresses um, some years back, I always tried to um, do, like, a customized sketch of the dress that, mm -hmm. you know, you could give to the bride, and it would be in a frame, and also with some, like, fabric swatches of it so they could pass it on. I don't know. I think it's cool to have little uh, details of things. What what happened here? You're talking into your... Oh, great. Hopefully that was... Hmm. All right. Anyways. Keep going. Okay. So... <clears throat> There is someone on social media called Bailey, and she's got an Instagram account, um, and I'm so bad at names. It's Tribe Van Tassel. I believe her last name is Van Tassel, so that's why, but oh, oof, might not be pronouncing that right. But anyways, I think she's great at creating experiences because what she does is she has a little um, garden outside of her home. She's got these garden beds, and she lives in the neighborhood, and she shows you how you can garden even when you don't have a lot of land. 
But what she does is she takes produce from her garden and she does what she calls little bundles and takes like craft paper and puts like little spinach leaves and herbs and things in a little packet and ties them with string. And then she puts them in a little basket and she goes with her little boy and her baby daughter and they go door to door and hand out these fresh things from her garden. For free? Yeah, and it's her way of like inspiring people. Like That's brilliant. This is what I do from my garden and you know that sort of thing and I think that's an experience so that's so that's something someone will remember forever absolutely that somebody kind of took the time to do something special and write a little note and then it could the whole goal I think for her is to inspire others to grow food um, so I'll give you a quick example yeah. my parents used to bake cookies around the holidays for everyone that they did business with like bankers and others yeah and you know, my mom spending three hours in the kitchen was worth and fifty dollars in ingredients made it a lot easier to go. Hey, I need a million dollars for this project, and it's like maybe not <laughs> right. Remember, they brought us cookies. Yeah, those are the people that bring us cookies. Yeah. yeah. So those, it's these little things. Even the that smells, can make all the like you say, okay, like for example, this is one that's kind of, um, I, I always makes me remember is every time I walk into an anthropology the store they burn the exact same candle the thousand dollar candle well <laughs> yeah no <there's> strategy it's, <laughs> there <laughs> it's their volcano candle it's not a thousand dollars it's like thirty dollars but they have one huge version one that I think it's like what two hundred fifty dollars for like a massive one but it does smell really good well, okay, here's another example. No, but what I'm going to say is you burn the same scent every time, so you associate that memory with a great experience because it just makes you happy every time you smell oh, it. Oh, yeah. So you remember that every time. No, absolutely. I was thinking so about, it's... I have to brag about my sister and my mom. They have a hair salon. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I remember telling a friend of mine, he, he kind of elaborated or oh, yeah. maybe even embellished on the story. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he went there just to get a men's haircut. And he just raved. I mean, he literally fit it into a long presentation he right, gave. Right, right. But it was basically, uh, I mean, they give you cookies and they've got teas and special fizzy. Uh, they even freeze raspberries inside ice cubes and put them mm -hmm. in your little drink they give you. And, and they, they do like a hand massage every time you get your hair washed. Yeah, so they all these little things and it's, people don't forget those yeah. things. And it's the whole thought of how can we, what they, their tagline is how can we make your day incredible, mm -hmm. but people don't forget those special details. So yeah, uh, the thought is in anything we do in life, how can we go that extra step to make what we do memorable for others and not just to be memorable because there's no point in just being memorable. But like on a truck, put flow masters on your truck so when they drive by, all you hear is whoa. <laughs> Cue the truck. Cue the truck. You can use that. Oh, it's no four wheelers. It's four wheelers. What's funny is our road is not very traveled at all, except near the weekend because I think people are out a little more. By four wheelers. <laughs> but okay, what I was trying to say is <clears throat> that don't just do things to be memorable or you know or whatever, but because that's what brings people the greatest joy and happiness. And I think for us. We would love to inspire people to do things that bring others happiness and joy and to do things that are the most fulfilling to you. So to us, you know, the garden was something we felt was something that would be fulfilling for us. And we and wanted to do that in a beautiful way to enjoy it and have others enjoy it. And to invite friends over and do a dinner and have the lights. And yeah, it was pretty fun to do that. So maybe we should get four wheelers. Nah. <laughs> Anyways, and whatever you do, do it with um, all you got so that you can bring joy to others and I and always create the best experience. And I wish, I don't know if in the video, hold on real quick, because in the video I'm going to turn the alpacas right there eating. See? All right. So for the podcast, we're going to say bye for now. And we hope you have a great week and thank you for listening. All right. Hold on. There they are. <laughs> You're the best child ever. Way to go, Ava. Way to go, Mama. All right. <laughs>